with us. Thank God for the worship experience that you're about to experience on this morning. So we're thankful that you join in today. And we praise God for the people of God that's in the sanctuary on today as well. And we're going to commence our morning worship. The Lord says, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. So we praise God for this opportunity today. We're going to begin with our Psalms. If you would rest on your feet. Our Psalms is Psalms 27. We'll start at the fourth verse. We'll read three verses of Psalms 27. And it reads, One thing I have desire of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up on a rock. And now shall my head be lifted above my enemies. Round about me, therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of praise. I will sing, yea, I will sing unto the Lord. We praise God for the reading of his word this morning. bow our heads. Father God, we thank you once again for this is the day that the Lord has made. We bow to rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us one more time to come into your sanctuary, Lord God, to lift you up, Lord God, to lift up your name today, God, because your name is richly deserved to be praised today. God, we thank you again for your people. We thank you for another Sunday morning joy, oh God. For we know, God, that the joy of the Lord is our strength today. And thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning, clothing our right mind, giving us the active use of our limbs on this morning, that we can come in, Lord God, and enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. And we're going to be thankful unto you, and we're going to bless your name. Hallelujah. We say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, God. We bless your holy name. God, you are the lift of our head, and we lift you up on this morning, oh God. Oh God, and we thank you. Our anoint our voices, God, that we may sing praises unto your name, Lord God. Oh God, that some soul may be delivered on today, oh God. And we thank you, God, and we put this service in your hands. Let your anointing, oh God, saturate us. Hallelujah, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Every door that opened today, God, that we will not leave the same where we came, but hallelujah, we'll give you a right now praise, oh God. We'll give you right now glory, God. And we say thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Move by your spirit, oh God. And we thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord on this morning. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, how many come to worship him today? We bless the God of our salvation. Yes. Hallelujah. We have the victory on this morning. We bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just lift your hands wherever you are and just in your own way, thank just you, begin to talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Just tell yes. the Lord, I just thank you. The I Lord, love I on you today. You. I thank you, dear God, for wherever yes. danger was, dear God, you kept me, dear God. Yes. Even those things that I didn't even know about, God, yes. God, you did it for me, Lord. Yes. Lord, I worship yes. you today. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. You are worthy, yes. Father. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, yes, Lord. Yes, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it in your Thank own you. way. Just love on him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me, death could not hold you down, you are the risen King, seated in majesty. 
Say that together. Death could not hold you down. Death could not hold him. Death could not hold you down. Come on, when you think about those things today, death could not hold Christ. Come on, I just need just two or three to agree with me that death could not hold him. Death could not hold you. And because death. 
Come on, hold them. That means that victory belongs to the Father. Hey, thank you. And because we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ, that means that you have the victory that's holding it all. Which means that you have got the things that your pardon takes it all. We want you to know that we cannot go into town because the Father is seated in majesty at your feet. Come on, the Lord is seated in majesty. The Lord is seated in majesty. We thank you, Father, for the victory. Come on, just clap your hands right there. Hallelujah. And tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you today. Hallelujah. We thank the Father today. If it had not been for the Lord, if He had not got up, thank you, Lord. If He had not been seated, thank you, Lord. If it had not been for the Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who was on our side? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Where would we be today? Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I am grateful. Grateful. I am grateful. Is there anyone else in the house today that is grateful? I am truly grateful. Come on, I am grateful today. Everything may not look right, but I am grateful. Hallelujah. Everything may not seem right, but I am grateful. Yes, God. Hallelujah for the Lord Jesus, because I have a hope today. Thank you, Lord. Oh, come magnify the Lord with me, the word of the Lord says, and let us exalt his name. What? Oh, come on. I know you have on the mask. I know we're on air. But oh, come magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt. Let us yeah. exalt his name together. together. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together. Woo! Come on, clap those hands wherever you are. Yeah. For he is worthy to be praised. We're just going to take it old school. Oh, all right, all right, all right. oh, come magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Yeah. Oh, come magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, say, oh, come magnify. Oh, come magnify the Lord. Come on, praise him. For he, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, come magnify. Oh, come magnify the Lord. For he is worthy. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, let's cry out. Hosanna. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed. Blessed be the rock. Blessed. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Here we go. Oh, come. Oh, come magnify the Lord. For he is worthy. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, come magnify. Oh, come magnify the Lord. For he. For he is worthy. Come to on, be lift praised. those voice today and say, Hosanna. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed. blessed be the rock. Yeah. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. One more time. Oh, come. Oh, come. Oh, come. Magnify the Lord. For he. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, come, oh, come, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, lift those voice. Hosanna. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. 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 Put your hands together. Blessed be the rock. 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 Blessed be the rock of my salvation. God bless you. Hosanna, 
Hosanna. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. We came to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you cry, Hosanna? Oh, glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Let the enemy hear you this morning. Hallelujah. Raise your voice. Hallelujah. And cry out. Ah, it's praise and worship. It's praise and worship. Give him your best praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Don't let nothing stop you. Hallelujah. Reach. Hallelujah. Reach this morning. Hallelujah. Ah, God. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Blessed be the rock, the rock of my salvation. I stand on that rock. It's a firm rock. It's a solid foundation. Ah, God, I trust you this morning. I've got everything else. All other ground are sinking sand. But I stand on that rock this morning. The rock that is able to keep me from falling and to present me faultless. Oh, come on, people of God. Won't you lift your voice this morning? Ah, oh, God, and let the enemy hear you. Ah, oh, God, Jesus, I love you. I worship and adore you. I bless your holy name. You are the creator. You are the giver. You are the healer, the sustainer. Ah, oh, God, and I worship you this morning. With every fiber of my being, I worship you this day. Ah, oh, God, I give it to you, God. Ah, oh, God, I honor you for who you are. Oh, come on. Give him a wave offering this morning. Hallelujah. Just wave your hands this morning in submission, in surrender. Hallelujah. I surrender all to you today, Father God. It is because of you, Lord, why I'm yet still standing. Oh, glory be unto God. We love the Lord today with all our hearts, and we just come to magnify him. He is an awesome God. God bless you. God bless you. We truly thank you again for this opportunity. We praise God for this being one more time in the house of God. We just want to reverence um, our pulpit this morning, and we praise God for all our minister on today. We praise God for our bishop on this morning. Praise God for you people of God. Hallelujah. Continue. Keep on. Keep the press on. Hallelujah. To our deacons this morning. To every office in your respectful place on today. We praise God for you. Oh God, and we admonish you in the presence of the our great God. At this time, you may be seated in the presence of the Almighty. Glory be unto God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God is awesome. He's awesome. Isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy? Worthy is the Lamb. Mm -mm -mm. Glory be unto God. I thank the Lord for that we're all here, safe and sound. Thank God for the viewers out there as well. This is the time where we would welcome, do our, our welcome address. So this morning, we just, we welcome everyone in the presence of the Almighty. We praise God that you had an unction, you had a desire. Uh, I think it was burning. Glory be unto God. And you found yourself in the presence of God again. Glory be unto his name. At this time, we're going to receive our announcements. We're going to ask our announcer to come at this time, and she'll give us, she'll keep us abreast of what's going on. Glory be unto God. Praise the Lord. As we see a few more faces returning to physical worship, we ask that you kindly always keep your face mask on, sanitize, and wash your hands upon entering the building, and remember to social distance. Once service is over, we ask that you please exit the building. Bishop and Pastor Sadler will greet you on the outside. And we are having an awesome time in prayer, Thursday at 7 p.m. Please take a moment and plug into the power of corporate prayer with our ministers. The prayer line is on the prayer line information is on our Facebook page or please ask one of the ministers. You may also submit your prayer request in advance at C L O V O M at AOL.com. Following prayer, Thursday at 7:30, join us virtually on Facebook Live as our topic this week is conversations with our youth and young adults. Pastor Sadler will be discussing various topics as it pertains to parenting, choices, and the challenges and realities we are facing today. We, pr we are proud to announce that we have teamed up with the Miami Dolphins Foundation in a free food relief program. Our next drive takes place on Saturday, October 10th at 12 noon. 
please grab a flyer and share. We are also in need of volunteers. If you are able to participate, participate, please contact Sister Cherie for more information. This ends our morning announcements. Thank you, Sister Hermes. Um, we trust that you just govern yourself accordingly. God bless you. At this time, the word is kind of ready to come to us. The word of life will be imparted again. And I trust that you're ready to receive what I said the Lord this morning. I believe that's why you're here. Amen. And I believe that's why the viewers have tuned in as well. Glory be unto God. God bless you. God bless you. At this time, we will have a sermonic solo from our brother Winston. So let's receive him at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. We pray. We pray. Yahweh. We pray. Yahweh. We pray. Yahweh, we pray. We pray. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Yeah. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Yeah, all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. There's nothing I will go through yes, that you won't give the glory all. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As you rest on your feet, oh, come on. Who the glory belongs to? Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. It belongs to the Almighty. It belongs to the one and only. It belongs to the risen Savior. It belongs, hallelujah, to your creator, your deliverer, your healer. Hallelujah. It belongs to him this morning. Ah, God, won't you let him know? Hallelujah. The glory belongs to him. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. God bless you. God bless you. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to present to you no other than our Bishop Tony Saba. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, praise him like he done something for you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give him the praise. Thank you, Lord. Now, give him a thank you because he's on your side. Oh, come on, come on. I said, give him a thank you because he's on your side. You don't have to worry about the enemy because the enemy is already destined to die. But you are destined to live. So this is why as you stand on your feet and as you magnify the Lord, I want you, even with your mask on, I want you to give a great big shout. Hallelujah! There you go. There you go. There you go. No mass won't stop my praise. I said no mass won't stop my praise. Oh, have mercy. All right, I believe that we just get warmed up, Butler. Lord have mercy, we've been down to our third Sunday. I know on first Sunday, Mother Williams, I took them, they was in first gear. Now, on the second Sunday, they were in second gear, Brother Winston. So I believe now that we should be able to flow a little bit on the third Sunday. 
I believe that we can get loose on the third Sunday. I believe that we can as far as rejoice in the third Sunday. I believe that we can as far as give God the glory on the third Sunday. Because I know some of you had different expectations of what church is going to be like. But you are the church. And when you come into the church, it should be a fellowship with the church with a church. Oh, they didn't get that. So when you put your stuff together with my stuff, what a time it got to be. This is why no demon nor devil in hell can sit in here because the praises of the saints. Oh, Lord have mercy. All right, all right, all right. Lord have mercy. I, I, I want you to know, saints, God, that you have been going through, I know, because I've been going through. But I beg the difference to let you know that is more for us than against us. Oh, Lord have mercy. I said there's more for us that's against us. So right there, you need to shout hallelujah. Hmm. All right, all right. Some of you are still trying to play catch up. All right. God has been good, saints of God. From the small things to the great things, he's been good. We still have people that are still in the hospital. But thanks be to God that the prayers of the righteous, the prayers of the righteous avail of much. We got some warriors that's on a battlefield that haven't gave up yet. We got some prayer warriors that is able now to lift up the bloodstained banner. We got some warriors in here. The Bible already set you up saying that you're more than a conqueror. So whatever the devil threw at you, you have overcame it. This is why we can truly say that we're more than a conqueror. And I thank God for each and every one of you the press that you had in you for this Sunday morning. Last Sunday morning was last Sunday morning, but I thank God for this Sunday morning. It's a brand new day. Oh, yes. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new Sunday, and I appreciate each and every one of you for being in the house of the Lord. All right, we want to get right into the word of the Lord, so get those Bibles, those devices, whatever you have in your hands, remain standing. We thank the Lord for our cyber audience, those in virtual. We thank God for each and every one of you tuning in, and we want to share this word with you, but before we go into the word of the Lord, we're going to just say a brief prayer. Gracious Father, eternal God, God of heaven, God of earth, we thank you, O Lord, for your holiness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for how you have blessed us to come in heavenly places. And Father, as we present thy word unto your people, multiply it unto their hearts and their minds as they may receive your word. And Father, we bless those that desire to be here but cannot make it, even those in the hospital beds, those in the nursing homes, those in prison walls. Let your word go forth. Let it accomplish what it's sent to do. And for that, Father, we give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor and the wonderful and splendid name of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Turn your Bibles, your devices, to whatever you have to 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. We thank God for the pulpit, for our pastor Sadler, for our minister Butler, to all of our ministers in, in, in their absence, Minister Armbrister, Deacon. All the people of God, we thank the Lord for each and every one of you tuning in out there. And we appreciate the gathering of the Holy Ghost being in this place. I want you to give special tribute to those first responders. We still haven't forgot about them, even though that the pandemic have is going down, but they're still on a battlefield in their various places. So we don't forget them. Those hospital workers, those truck drivers, those bus drivers, all those the store clerks, all those central, none essential, but are aiding that you may have food as you go to the shelf, that you may have what you need. So we thank God for each and every one of them still remaining on their posts. So we give them homage and tribute to them. All right. First Kings, the 19th chapter. 
beginning with verse 1. And it reads, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as a life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he rose and went for his life. And came to Bathsheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. Go to verse 9. And he came thither into a cave, and there lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What dost thou hear? Elijah, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altar, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I alone, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountain and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, a still small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What does thou hear, Elijah? Look at verse 9 again. And verse 9, I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to read this in your ears. And he came hither into a cave and lodged there, stayed there, lived there occupied that space there and behold the word of the Lord came to him and he said unto him what doth thou hear Elijah well for the congregation on this morning for those that's in virtual land I want you to know stop being a cave dweller Stop being a cave dweller. Stop being a cave dweller. You may be seated. Now, we all know the story of Elijah. But let me just get you up to date as we started with the first verse, the 19th chapter. How that after Elijah was in a contest. He was there on Mount Carmel, if you read verses 17 and 18 of this very same book. And how the prophets of Baal was in competition with Elijah, the man of God. And they were false prophets. They were prophets of Jezebel. And how Elijah I said, well, if your gods be gods, let them show themselves great and mighty. And my God, Jehovah, 
will show that he's great and mighty. So they agreed. So we all know the story, but to fast forward, that when they had performed the task of laying an altar, and the prophets of Baal began to cry out unto their gods, and their gods did not respond. Their gods did not answer their request. And now they've done it from morning until the afternoon. And after which Elijah said, all right, now it's my turn. And Elijah began now to say, I want to use that very same altar that you built, but I want you now to rebuild it again, and I want you to do as exactly as I tell you to do. And he said, now build a trench around the altar and fill it three times and put 12 stones around it. And I'm going to call out to my God, my Savior, and my Deliverer. And the God that I serve, I know that he will answer me. And as Elijah began to pray, the Bible say that the heavens now begin to rejoice. The heavens now begin to open up and fire came down from heaven. And it consumed the sacrifice. It consumed the altar. It consumed the water. It consumed the stones. It lacked up everything. And after which the people rejoiced because they said that Elijah God is God. And as they begin now to rejoice, Elijah said, now kill all of the prophets of Baal. So now, after all this that took place, now Elijah is going on his own. And as he is going on his own, we find out that Ahab the king had, was there and he told his wife, the queen, Jezebel, that what took place. So here we come to the setting that as Ahab reported, he made a report to Queen Jezebel. And regarding the prophets of Baal, he said that, you know, Elijah destroyed your prophets. And it had no effect, now watch this, no effect on her other than to cause her to become determined to destroy the man of God. We have people that is on this earth. And Sister Marcia, their assignment is to make havoc of you. Their assignment is to ridicule you. Their assignment is to come against you. Their assignment is to make you doubt yourself and doubt your God. Their assignment here is to work the very essence of where you stand. So she said, hmm, okay. So my prophet time, huh? all right. So then she went on to say, she swore, Butler, she swore saying that by the next day, Elijah would be dead like the prophets of Baal. Now, imagine this great man of God that done so many miracles on his walk in life. He done so many things for the children of Israel. He was a powerful prophet of his time. And here the word got out that he is now wanted. For his life. So in doing this, she made Butler the mistake of telling him. Telling him that I'm going to kill you. I'm going to get rid of you. And she sent message by her messenger to say, the same time tomorrow, your life is going to be gone. So now... Look at what this done, and I want you all to look at what I'm trying to explain. As Elijah being a man of God or who he is, you being a woman or a man, just like you are, and you have various elements that are against you, and you seem to have God, the mighty hand of God had delivered you, but there's always a time in your life that you're going to get despaired. It's always a time in your life where you're going to lose hope. It's always going to be a time in your life, no matter how much and what God has done for you, you're not going to be satisfied. Why? Because the enemy has showed his hand. So now as Jezebel said, about the same time I'm going to get rid of you, he began now to run for his life. Now, I want you to imagine this, this man that called fire down from heaven and saying, I'm on the run. 
I'm getting out of here because this woman has put a mark on my head. This woman has said that I'm going to be just like those prophets that were killed. So I got to get out of here. So in doing so, after Elijah's great victory over the prophets of Baal and the rain had came, yet Elijah's courage failed him. Many times, our courage has went and ran somewhere because we look at what people say. We hear what people say. We look at what people, what people do to us. We look at what people for us want to criticize us, and this would cause us to run. This great man of God, he began now to run for his life. And I want you to know that it can be taken, it can take one statement from an individual that can cause a setback. One person can open up their mouth and you will get discouraged. It could be a family member, it could be a co-worker, it could be a neighbor, but someone have a word that always want to mess you up. And when you begin to listen to people long enough, then you're going to get messed up. But I want to serve you notice that it's time for you to stop being a cave dweller. Because many of us, even in this pandemic, people have been cave dweller. I'm not going nowhere. No matter where it's at, Butler, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to stay here and be a hermit. I'm going to stay here and isolate myself. But I want you to know that God did not make you to be put in a cave to sit by yourself. God did not allow you to be about yourself. God did not allow you where you can have a pity party. So here the man of God, he began to run. And he began to run for his life. Notice this. I like this because as we read, now I didn't read the verses uh, 4 through 8. But I just want to share this with you. That as Jezebel it was threatening to kill him. This gave him an opportunity to escape, and he fled for his life to Bathsheba and left his servant there. Now watch this. And, and then when he, one day, he went on a journey because he was running, and he went in a, on a journey in the wilderness, and he sat under a Jupiter tree, and he prayed that he might die. And then he laid himself beneath the juniper tree. And while sleeping, an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. The angel of the Lord said, For Elijah looked and saw at his head some bread and a jug of water. And he began to eat and drink and lay down again. And he said, For the second time, the angel said, Eat. Because the journey that you're about to take is going to be so strenuous on you. Eat this. But notice this. The man of God had a pity party, Brother Winston. He said, you know what? I'm going to sit underneath this tree. It reminds me of another prophet, the prophet Jonah. He said, the sister of God won't destroy the city. I'm just going to sit under the tree and have a pity party. And there's something about when God works in the great men and women. It seems at one time in our life that we say that God don't exist. We say that one time God don't hear us. But God is not working by your program or by your agenda, but he's working by his. So now the man of God began to sit underneath this tree, and he said, now watch this. He said, uh, let me die. Now look at this. Now wait a minute, brother. Now look at this. The great man that did all these miracles, he sat down and said, let me die. Because this woman is going to kill me, so I just might as well take my last meal and die underneath this tree. And it gets where many of people that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We've seen all the miraculous things that God has done for us. But all of a sudden, when one thing comes that's out of our control, we say, let me die. When one thing that we don't have no jurisdiction over, we're going to say, well, where is God? When one thing that we, we don't have no control, we say, you know what, let me hide. Oh, Lord have mercy. 
So now they begin now we he begin to say, you know what, let me just go sit out. So after now sitting under this tree, he began now to set out a task. He began now, this journey took 40 days and 40 nights. Now watch how God set this up. 40 days and 40 nights. Well, we know fast forward, Jesus, 40 days and 40 nights. But notice this, he had enough of food and drink to suffice his, to suffice his need for his journey. So in getting down to this mount, Horeb. Horeb. How did he went to Mount Horeb? And when he went there, he went into a cave. And as he dwelt there in a cave, now mind you, when you hear about a cave or listen with the sound of a cave, a cave is a hollow place. A, a cave is a place that we're the opening of the earth in a mountain side. It can be naturally formed, it can be hewed out, but a cave is for two things. A cave is where to hide and a cave is where to die. We got folks, either you want to hide or you want to die. Oh Lord have mercy. In your situations, you want to hide or you want to die. In your difficulties, you want to hide or you want to die. Well, this great man of God and who he was, he said, you know what, that well, since now that God didn't kill me, Marcia, well, let me go into a cave and let me die. This is the same thing that God has tried to illustrate to the people of God. Come out of your cave dwelling because God has been too good for you. And I know that you do not understand what God is taking you through, but watch what God is doing for you. But God cannot do nothing for you if you're going to be a cave dweller. You got to see God's handiwork. But well, why are you staying in your home and having a pity party? Why are you staying far as by yourself and saying, you know what? If nobody don't know my understandings, and nobody don't know my circumstances, if nobody know what I'm going through, God knows what you're going through, but you got to don't be a cave dweller. So in this thing, he began now to be in the cave. And here the spirit of the Lord came unto him. And see, what I love about this, as God speak to me, he don't speak to you the same way he speak to me. See, you got to understand, you got to know the voice of God. And let me say this, you got to make sure that you know the voice of God because the devil can imitate God. See, many of people have went from the mark because they're saying, well, I hear the Lord speaking. No, honey, no, you better make sure it's the Lord because, see, the devil know how to disguise himself. When you know the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord is backed up by his word. And when he talk to you, the word got to back it up. If the word don't back it up, that means God ain't talking to you. Oh, oh go ahead, brother Winston, you ready to take me home? This is what you got to understand. If you're out there in cyberspace, you got to understand that many people hear a lot of things, but don't get your conscience messed up with God. Because, see, your conscience wants to do a lot of things. But not unless it's lined up with the word of God, then your conscience is also going against God's will. Many of folks got in trouble by their conscience. Many people got in trouble because, well, I heard. Or I felt. It got to be lined up with the word of God. So here we see that the man of God, he was there. And now, get this, saints. Again, we all know what Elijah can do, huh? but even he got messed up. Oh, Lord have mercy. What you saying? Yes, even some preachers can get messed up. Some bishops can get messed up. Some apostles can get messed up. Some pastors can get messed up. If, if you are not in line with God, you can get messed up. And then we have those folks that are always hearing things. We have folks that are always seeing things. And all your authority lies in the will of God. So when we see that as Elijah begin now to be in the cave, the word, the Bible says this, and watch this. See, this is how you're knowing 
that God is with you even when you're having a pity party because the word of the Lord will come to you. And how do the word of the Lord come to you? This is why that when you wake up in the morning, you got to give attributes. You got to get accolades to the God that delivered you, the God that woke you up. You get to acknowledge God in all your ways. This is how you know his voice because many things can come to you and you'll be hearing all kinds of things but this is why you know the voice of God. When he was in the cave he heard the voice of God. He was hiding but, but he still heard the voice of God. Williams, he wanted to die, but he still heard the voice of God. Some of you are lacking, but you still can hear the voice of God. Some of you ain't are where you ought to be, but you can still hear the voice of God. Some of you have backslidden, but you still can hear the voice of God. Some of you have turned your back, but you still can hear the voice of God. Oh, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. You can still hear the voice of God when you want to do right. God will speak to you. Even though you don't act right, but when you want to do right, I said, God... Well, talk to you. I know you haven't been church. I know you haven't been praying. But you have a desire within your loins. The Lord, I got to be saved. And when you want to be saved, God will say, I'm going to speak to you, honey. I'm going to speak to you, buddy. I'm going to speak because you belong to me. So when Elijah was in the cave, and he was a cave dweller, and then as he came out the cave and began now to look around, and the voice of the Lord said, hey, Elijah, what are you doing here? You don't have no business here. Didn't I tell you again that I have something for you to do? So why are you being a cave dweller? Why are you having a pity party? Why are you messed up? Well, let me just say this. Let me pause for a moment. Many of you not, may not be in a physical cave setting, but the cave of your mind. Oh, Lord have mercy. The cave of your thoughts. The cave is hidden away because you don't want to have no part of what God is trying to do. But God will come in the very darkest hour of your time and talk about you and tell you to get up and out of yourself and get out of this cave because you're not a cave dweller. Lord, I wish I had some people here. I'm talking to somebody. Some of you stop being a cave dweller. I got to be all alone. Nobody don't understand me. I'm going through. Let's keep your mouth shut and listen to the voice of God. Lord have mercy. Let me come to this close. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is how God can tell you. See, because some of you, some people that are saved and signified butler, she knows this. I like how he came to me. And by the way, I want y'all to know, you know the group, Earth, Wind, and Fire? This is where they got it from. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Look it up. You are noticing the same thing uh, of title. Uh, but watch what he's saying. Now, since that you want to be a cave dweller, well, let me say something. Step out for a few moments. Step out of the cage and just come here. I want to show you a little thing. And God showed them. Now, look at this. He said, now, now, do you see, see anything? You don't know, no. But I feel now a wind, and it's a strong wind. And man, the wind is like, whoa, man, it's almost blowing me back in the cave. And, uh, but the voice said, I'm not in that. Lord have mercy. And then now, it begin now, the earth begin to shake. It begin to shake. The rocks begin to crumble. The rocks begin to now to separate. They begin everything. All over begin to shake. And the voice of the Lord said, I'm not in that. Oh, Lord have mercy. And then it went on. Oh, Lord, look at this thing. And then fire, that same fire that he used to bring down the prophets of Baal is the same fire that was there. But God said, I'm not in that. What you're saying? See, some of y'all want God to come and do a great thing. Oh, Lord have mercy. Did I say that? I said, God, again, y'all looking for him to do a great thing. But God said, see, I need for you just to hush. Be silent. I'm moving on your behalf. See, some of y'all want somebody to holler and scream. The spit and slobber all over you and shake you up. But he said, a still small voice. The rocks can shake. The wind may blow. The fire may fall. But a still small voice. Many of you right now, that's all you need is a still small voice. 
that tell you to get on your feet and give him glory. Give him praise because God has brought you out. God has delivered you. God has set you free. So why are you worried about that? You're worried about the shaking of the earth. You're worried about the blowing of the wind. You're worried about the fire. But see, I want to talk to you where you can understand. I get to talk to you where I am you. I'm whispering in your ear. I'm whispering in your spirit. I'm whispering in your mind. Stop being a cave dweller. So I'm letting y'all know on this morning as many people in the house of God, those in cyber, those in the physical church, stop being a cave dweller. Get out of yourself. No, it's the trick of the enemy is trying to tell you that everybody is against you. It's a trick of the enemy that's telling you that everybody is watching you. It's a trick of the enemy that's telling you that everybody is looking at you. It's a trick of the enemy that's telling you that nobody don't like you. Stop being a cave drawer. Because when you're in the cave, let me tell you this, it's darkness. And you don't know what's going on. But see, you put yourself there. So if you put yourself there, you can get out of it. And the only way you can get out of it is being obedient to the word of God. So when he heard, he began now to come out. And if you notice, two verses say, verse 9 and verse 13, ask them, why are you in here? I want to ask you the same thing. Why are you in the cave dweller of your mind? Get out of the cave dwelling of your mind. You have now the right. I have ordained you. I gave you power and I gave you deliverance. So you can get out of it if you want to. See, when back in biblical time, and I'm ending this, I noticed something. How that the children of Israel had made it where the Philistines was against them. Also, you had another story that when Saul was chasing David, and when Saul was chasing David, because Saul wanted to kill David. But notice this. See, it's a time and place for all things. It's a time and place that where now David was running for his life, and his back was against the wall. And once he had nowhere to go. But now watch this. The only time that God have allowed you now to get somewhere is because that he wants to show his power and his greatness. So now David, now watch this. David went into a cave. And Saul was after him. But David went into the cave first. And David got in the cave, him and his men. And they were there because they was running from Saul. Now, all of a sudden, Saul with thousands and thousands of men was wondering, where did David go? So Saul began to say, you know what, Williams, it's getting too late, y'all. It's time now for the sun is going down. So we need to take a nap. We need to go to sleep. So look what God done. So God now said, all right, David, stay right where you at. No, don't leave out of here. When the night began to fall, Saul began to go into the same cave as David. As he went into the same cave as David, the cave was deep. deep. David was all the way to the rear of the cave. Saul and his army was near the entrance of the cave. But Saul said, you know what? Men, take a rest. We're going to pursue David at another time. Tomorrow we're going to pursue him, pursue him, but take a rest. He laid his head down to sleep. When David knew that Saul was in the same cave, Lord, have mercy. Watch what God does. God now allowed this cave now to be a sanctuary for the people of God. So even when somebody puts you in a cave, God knows how to get you out of the cave. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So now Saul was asleep. His men were asleep. David now, in the back of the rear of the cave, came out. He had the opportunity to kill Saul right there. Saul was going to kill David the first time he laid his eyes on him. But this time that David looked at Saul, David took his knife, took a piece of Saul's skirt robe, took a piece. Now, 
David told his men, all right, y'all, everyone be quiet. Let's leave the cave. All of David's 400 men left the cave of a 1,000 men. They tippy-toed on out of the cave. When they tippy-toed out of the cave, they went on the other side of the mountain. All of a sudden, David said, King Saul! King Saul! So, who called me? They look like David over there. David said, King Saul, I admire you. I love you. He was still giving accolades to the one that was going to kill him. Oh, Lord, what you saying? This is why the Bible lets you know. Don't pray for God to kill your enemy. Lord have mercy. Pray for God that he would now intervene for your enemy. This is what you got to do because we all have somewhere or another an enemy, but it's not your jurisdiction to ask God to kill him. Because I'm going to let you know, you are once somebody's enemy. Uh-oh, let me get back on here, all right? So notice, so at the time now, David said, hey, do this belong to you? a part of my robe. David says, see, king, I respect you. I admire you. You are God's anointed. No matter how much you want to kill me, but I cannot kill God's anointed. Because, see, it's something about God's anointed. It's not my jurisdiction nor my authority to kill you. But that's to let you know. See, I didn't dwell in the cave. But you dwelt in the cave. But look where it got you when you dwelled in the cave. See, I could have killed you. But I did not kill you. I gave you life. What you saying? I'm telling some of you that even though that you are now in the cave, God give you an opportunity to get out of the cave. You got to stop being a cave dweller because a cave dweller cannot have no victory. A cave dweller is either hiding or waiting for burial. Remember, there's only two ways a cave is used for hiding and for burial. I'm telling you right now as I close out, you got to get out that cave. You hear what I'm saying? You got to get out that cave. You got to stop hiding or you don't want to be buried, but you got to get out of the cave. You're hiding something. Don't worry about what somebody going to find on you. Be revealed and come out. The word of God say in two verses of the same scripture that God said, what are you doing here in the cave? And you don't belong in a cave. People of God don't belong in a cave. I know everything is after you, but you don't belong in a cave. God have a place of a resting place, of a hiding place that he's going to secure you. But you don't belong in a cave because a cave only have one entrance. God have a way of delivering you. But you got to come out. As I close, out there virtual, I want you to know you too you got to stop being a cave dweller you got to come to Christ saints, it's a time now I want you all, don't take this for granted this pandemic is not just here and I know that things are dying down the levels are going down, the peak is going down saints do not be deceived God is still doing some stuff. He's still waking up. This is going to be a postpartum problem after the COVID-19 is over. As we told y'all, this is why I got to tell you right now, we are going to be facing a pandemic that's going to mess up your mind. Is going to mess up your brain. We're going to have a mental COVID-19. Because all after the physical stuff, it have a residue. The stuff that's going to be for us still here and running over. People won't be right. Do you not know that it's going to be a cold shoulder to all the people of God? Men's hearts are going to be failing them. The love of many shall wax cold. You know why? 
because people's minds are still up in the air. Why? Because they're still going to be cave dwellers. Don't be a cave dweller. Get out and say, well, you know what? I just want to be all by myself. See, the problem is that, I got to close below. See, see, the problem is that, see, people that are by themselves often get depressed. I know I got quiet out there in Virginia. I know I, I didn't hear you either. But this is a serious thing. When you don't want to be around folks, you're saying, you know what? I want to be by myself. This is now where a spirit of depression and a spirit of, well, you know what? You don't need nobody. And that's the wrong spirit to have because the devil is constantly feeding your mind and saying that you don't need nobody. Afterwards, he come with other things. You see, when something small happen. That's why I don't trust nobody. And you begin to say all these things. And now, as far as no matter who come into your life that want to help you, you got your guard up so much. And then you say, well, people got an attitude. No, it's you the one. You got to make sure that God is speaking to you. And he speak to you even in his word. And when he speaks through his word, it's not going to always be peaches and cream. It's not going to be lovely. It's going to be something to help you grow. But many a times when people tell you the truth, a lot of folks don't want to hear the truth. But when it's God telling you the truth, honey, I will run to the word. God don't show partiality. God is no respect of person. So when I listen to the voice of God, he is getting me on track. He is setting me up to do and receive some great and marvelous things. But I got to make sure that I cannot be a cave dweller. Listen. We have been, we have been in many of things in our lives. And we're thinking that we have seen it all do corona. But I still want you all to know that God is still setting up and shifting things and putting things in order. And you got to make sure that you're in the order of God. This is why you got to come out of that cave dwelling of your mind. Don't think that everybody is against you. Knowing that God is for you. And who can be against you? This is why you must have the word. And the only way you're going to have the word is that you be prayed. Because I hear many times people say, well, I'm the church. Yes, you are the church. But as I said earlier, the church had to be equipped and handling different things that comes in and out. And just I am a physical structure of the church bodily, but you need also to the prayers of the righteous to be on you. You got to be draped with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You got to walk in the standards of the Holy Word. And the only way that you can do that is that you don't be a cave dweller. We can stand, those in the virtual, you can be with us. We are in a crisis. And now, listen to me, I'm not speaking about the COVID-19 crisis. We are in a crisis because of men's hearts are failing. And men's hearts are failing because we do not understand what is going on. And many of people is so baffled of what is going on in their loins of their mind. In the confinements of their body, soul, and spirit. And this is why that we all must continue to be in prayer mode. Always. Don't pray for something that where it is happening and you're saying, well, I'm not going to pray too much on that, but I'm going to pray on it. No, 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 no. The Bible says pray without ceasing. What I'm trying to tell you is that to always be in prayer mode. When things are going good, that's the time you should be praying the most. When everything is going right for you, that's the time you should be praying the most. See, because when you're in a situation, it's going to be situations that are going to dictate to you where you can't pray. 
Oh, yes. You're going to be so messed up that you can't even utter a word of prayer. This is why the old folks used to tell us that you need to have your spiritual banking account. So when you want to withdraw from prayer, you can withdraw a prayer. Because the time that where you can't pray, you can make a withdrawal. But you got to learn how to deposit first. When you deposit prayer, then you're allowed to make a withdrawal. If you got money and you put it into a banking account, a checking account, then you have a right to withdraw. But if you never put in into a savings or to a checking, how can you withdraw? The same thing spiritual, same thing natural. But we got to first make sure that we're in a setting, that we're in a place to pray. As I close out, Elijah, and what I love about this story, saints, he was powerful, brother. He was powerful. But it lets you know even the most powerful man of prophecy, the powerful man of all the prophets was great. He still was in a dilemma because he heard that someone was about to take his life. Don't worry about your life is what the word tells you. You can't add one cubit. You can't take away one cubit. Your life belongs to God. It's hidden in God. So I'm going to tell each and every one of you out there in virtual land just to lift up those holy hands. Lift up those holy hands. And I just want the Lord to saturate you with a spirit of gratitude. I want the Lord to saturate you with the anointing power that I may always be able to hear his word. As many a words that have been spoken, but I need to hear the Savior's word. I need to hear how he talked to me. I can't worry about that you want to take my life. I can't worry about what you're going to do. I got to worry about what he's going to say. But I just need a word from the Lord. And when I hear his word, I'm going to be satisfied. And I'm praying to this congregation. I'm praying to my virtual audience. I'm praying that they be saturated with the spirit of anointed to hear your word in these days that are to come. That you may have an open understanding of your mind, body, and soul that what God is doing and that he is now seeking for true believers, for true worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. I need you that's out there, you that is in this congregation, that as you hold up your hand, that you wave it unto the Lord, that you say, Lord, I'm standing right now. I'm not no more a cave dweller. If I wave my hand in the cave, you cannot see me. But I'm waving where you can see me. I'm waving because now I need you to deliver me. I need you now to sustain me. I need you now to give me the hope. I need you now, now to fulfill right now that boy. I need you, Lord, and only you can do it. This is where I stand right now because you're an awesome God. Father, bless this congregation. Bless my virtual audience. Bless the people abroad. Let them know, Father. Stop being a cave dweller and come into your presence. And for that, Father, we give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Awesome word. Stop being a cave dweller. God don't want you stuck. Mm. That word went forward to where it just went through me. And all I can thought about the cave just being a hollow place. That's all it is. And I said, my God, my mind went to the scripture. If you find yourself in that cave, then you need to hollow his name. Hollow your way out. Our Father, which is in heaven, mm, give us this day. Hallow it be thy name. Woo! We hallelujah. 
You got to know. You got to know the condition of your mind. If you just hollow his name, he don't want you in that cave. God bless you. God bless you. So much could be said on that. It's awesome word of God. Love the uh, Elijah story. Powerful, powerful prophet. My God. But that's to show you how the enemy, you know, that's just to show you how he works. Even, you know, he know you're powerful. He's still, he, he's not going to back off. He's going to push even more. So you got to be, make sure you're armed and ready. God bless you. Amen. It's offering time in the building. It's offering time. And at this time, as we prepare our hearts to give to, to our givers out there, to our tithers as well, we're going to agree with the scripture that says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the measure, for with the same measure that he meet with all, it shall be measure to you again. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, give you praise. We thank you for this offering that we're about to receive. Father, I ask right now that you would look unto the givers. Our God, look unto the tithers, God. We pray this morning over every financial, hallelujah, obligation. We pray, God, that you will be the source. Our God, that you will be the resource. Father, we, take, we pray you take everything in control. Bless thy people now. And bless, Father God, those who have a desire, oh God, and not able at this time. We pray, God, that you will, in, in time, that you will bless them as well. Father, we love you. We carefully give your name the praise for who you are. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We're going to ask you just to follow the direction of the ushers at this time. If you will rest on your feet, if you will be a partaker of this offering, you can rest on your feet, follow the direction of the usher. God bless you. Amen. We thank you for your giving. We praise the Lord. Continue to continue to bless you that you're able to continue to give back out of your substance. Glory be unto God. At this time, we just want to acknowledge our drummer, our sister Kayla. Come on, give it up for her. Amen. We thank you for filling in. Amen. Praise God. That's what it's all about. All right. At this time, we're going to prepare ourselves for communion. As the Lord that laid upon our bishop heart to take this entire month so that we can what well, get commune with God. I know we had missed out a, a couple of months, but we're gonna try to make it up. Amen. He said, as often as you do this, you do it into remembrance. So although we missed a few months, we're gonna continue to commune continue to ask God to bless this Lord's Supper. So if you will be a partaker on this morning,
for your announcements. We're so glad to have you back. Please remember to wear your mask at all times and practice social distancing before, during, and after services. We also invite you to meet us every Thursday at 7 p.m. on our prayer line. Let's plug into the power of prayer. Following prayer this Thursday at 7.30, our Bible study will consist of a conversation with our youth and young adults. You don't want to miss this. If you haven't already, please take a moment and complete your 2020 census. The deadline is September the 30th. Are you seeking a church home? If so, we invite you to join us. Our doors are open and we welcome you with love. If you would like to be an e-member, please email us. And last, we thank you for joining in to today's worship and sowing into good ground.